Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, regulars uh, to the channel will recognise these old air pistols of mine. Um, this one needs repairing. Uh, I'm working on that one guys, I'm working on it. I hope to do a video of it fairly sh so shortly. Um, I was walking past uh, a stall on the market and I have been done doing so for quite some time now and the guy sells air rifles and pistols and what have you on there and the other month I walked past and he had the box standing upright like this and I thought that gun looks familiar some, somewhere along the line so I uh, sort of stopped by and took a quick look at it uh, and this is what I found it's a Gamo um, MP9 and how I recognised it I um, I follow on YouTube, I follow Military Arms channel, Tim, and he had a, uh, a B&T TP9 on there, which he uh, converted into an SBR, and I thought, wow, yeah, I know what that is. So uh, anyway, I started talking to the wife, and she says, no, you're not spending that money, you know, that sort of money on a, on a gun. You're not doing it. Anyway, I uh, managed to get round her yesterday, and look, here it is, guys, I got one. Haha. <laughs> This is the first air gun that I have bought in, what, 35 years, I should think? Tell you what we better do is uh, get it out of the box and have a look at it. What do you think? Let's have a look what we've got in here, shall we? <coughs> I can open the box up. Can we get into it? Here we go. There we are, look, look. There's the instruction manual for it. I might go through that later on. Uh, and there is the uh, gun itself. What we have here is a very nice replica, very good quality replica of the uh, Bruger and Tomit MP9 submachine gun, um, which uh, obviously runs 9x19, 9mm ammunition. Um, this one runs uh, 177 pellets, and it is uh, one of the newer style of air guns that all the ones or most of the ones I had were either a pump or a spring action but this is one of the newer style ones uh, it uses little gas cylinders these things little uh, co2 canisters of uh, not had uh, an air gun that actually runs these so far this is the first one I've had um, these are the three canisters that came with it um, so far let's just put these over here for a minute so far guys, I haven't put any rounds through this gun whatsoever. Uh, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to take you guys down, because I can't shoot it outdoors here unfortunately, because we're in an, in an urban environment here, so I can't really shoot it outdoors. So we'll take it down into the garage later on, and, and put the first few rounds through it. Um, I've got a little bag of pellets that came with it. I think there must be probably about 50 to 100 there, probably 50 I would imagine. These ones look like a standard, sort of like Diablo style, almost pointy rounds. I did manage to find an old tin here, it says pointed on here. They were hollow points at one point, but these are like little sharp pointy things. There's a few left in the tin here, don't know how many's left in there, probably about 20, 30 maybe. Hunting through my garage, I found this tin of um, H&N uh, hollow point semi wad cutters. Uh, I must have purchased these probably uh, early to mid 80s, maybe sort of early 80s, maybe. And as you can see, they've never even been opened yet. Brand spanking new, never been opened tin in all those years. Look, so I've got uh, quite a bit of ammunition at the moment. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the gun itself for a moment or two. As I say, it is a, a very good quality replica of the Bruger and Tomit MP9 submachine gun. Um, <clears throat> this one does have the folding stock as well, as you can see. You just uh, pull it out and it snaps into place at the back here. Hope you can see that. We'll have a better look at it later on. Very nice looking uh, gun. It's got all the uh, 
all the relevant detailing to it. Uh, some of the stuff works, some of it doesn't. We have the uh, bolt hold open and release here. That doesn't work. The proper magazine release doesn't work because it's got its own magazine release at the bottom here. Which way do we push it now? There we go. There's the uh, magazine for the gun itself. We'll have a look at that one in a minute or two as well. Um, the detailing on this thing is quite good. It is actually made for Gamo by a company in Japan. And they say the quality and finish on this thing is really nice. We've got its own little serial number just here. We have uh, pick rails all over it. If you don't know what a pick rail is, it's a Picatinny or 1913 rail used for uh, mounting different accessories. Um, you could get a, a vertical foregrip or an AFG on here. You could have a light on here too, light, light or laser uh, sight on there. We have another pick rail here. Again, you could have a light or laser on there too. And we can get on the top here, on the top pick rail, you could get a scope or uh, better sights, because I find these sights to be a little bit on the small side of things. They're not up to much really at all. I don't think the, the rear one is adjustable. Uh, personally, I don't think it's up to much. We have the charging handle here, AR-15 style, of course, if you're familiar with such things. And we have a, a, ma a safety, the, the pistol safety, the gun safety just there. We've got safe that side and fire through there like so. Uh, obviously, this is your primary safety, guys. Keep it out of the trigger guard until you're ready to fire. We have a tri-lug adapter on the muzzle here. Uh, on this particular gun, the muzzle comes more or less to the front there on the original genuine gun. I think the, the muzzle is actually back here somewhere and this is just like a, a hollow can style -y thing. And this is to put a suppressor on it. If you've got the relevant suppressor, you can drop that on and twist it on. And you can see there's the uh, ejection port here, not marked in any way. But there's the ejection port, which would the, uh, the cartridge will be <coughs> thrown out of on the genuine gun. Okay, the other safety feature on this gun is this uh, Glock style lever on the trigger itself. If we move it across to fire, uh, if you don't pull the, uh, the lever across with the trigger, it's not going to go anywhere. So you need to depress this lever first and the trigger will uh, travel backwards properly and fire the gun. This one's not loaded at the moment. If this were a real uh, MP9, this here would be your magazine. This is just a, uh, a cover. Just pinch it here and away it comes. Uh, we can see the... Uh, oops, there it goes. There's the gun's magazine. We have uh, two eight round rotary mags here, one that side and one that side. We'll look those closer later on. Uh, this here is the uh, the newfangled bit for me guys. This is the um, where the gas cartridge goes in. I'm really not used to this sort of thing at all. I've not had one before and as I say I haven't put any rounds through this gun at all yet. <coughs> the uh, cartridges drop in there like so and then we just tighten this up and hopefully it should there it goes a little bit of gas escaping there oh don't do that damn my gas is just hang on get it back in the gun there we go I had gas escaping there for a moment guys what will happen um, if we pull the... Oh! Blimey. Really not used to this at all. This is my first uh, gas gun, as it were. Let's put the magazine back in a second or two. Now this, uh, this magazine is actually empty, guys. There are no rounds in this at all. You can probably see through there, hopefully. So we'll pop that back in the chamber, into the uh, magazine well. There we are. It's on fire, yes. What will happen if we pull the trigger then? Nothing. Oh, let's charge it. Hang on. Right, let's charge it. Blimey. I felt that. That's, uh, oh, yeah, that's noisy. That's made me ears ring. Right in. <laughs> oh, blimey. Um, it actually, uh, there's a bit of tissue on the window over there, which is about 
four feet away and it lifted that off the uh, window sill a bit so we're definitely ready to go right here's a close-up of the uh, magazine guys as you can see it's a eight round rotary magazine one at that end and one at this end too as you can see it's marked here as being uh, pellets or BB's uh, BB's a little steel um, as you can see little balls I won't be putting BB's through this gun why is that because it has a rifled barrel and I don't wish to take the rifling out of the barrel so I'll only be using uh, lead pellets I think what we better do guys is get get this thing loaded up uh, get it down to the garage and see what we can do right let's get a few rounds loaded into the magazine then shall we just pop them in like this from this side here rotate the cylinder round same again pop him in takes as I say eight rounds and there we go now I can actually feel the weight in the thing now alrighty right what we'll do is we'll take um, the little MP9 down to my range in the garage uh, and we can uh, give it some first rounds then first shots okay guys here we are with the uh, mp9 in my little range in the garage here so a quick look down there this is what i've got to shoot at you probably recognize this from another review of mine of the gat air pistol uh, we are shooting against a solid brick wall backstop down there so the rounds are not going to go anywhere they should stop dead on that okay so if we um Make the gun ready then. Pop a magazine in. <clears throat> All right, charge it. I think it needs charging. Probably not actually. Right, then. let's give it a go. I'm not sure where it's going to go because I've not fired this. This is the first time of shooting. Let's give it a go. Bottom right. Oh, take the safety off. Okay, where do they go to then? Safety back on. And there we have first three, three rounds fired. Just there, not bad at all then. All right guys, I've just popped a bit of a stainless steel down there now. Something to make a noise against when we hit it. Take the safety off and I'll give it a go. Definitely uh, made a racket there, then. And there's the dent it left. Well, that was certainly quite noisy, and the pellet came back this way somewhere. Uh, don't forget, we're all wearing uh, iPro as well, guys. Um, but we're not going to be shooting at uh, stainless steel anymore. We'll just carry on with the uh, cardboard downrange. This is going to be top right this time. Slightly underneath by the looks of things. Let's go have a look. There we are. Just underneath the uh, aim point there. Okay, so we've got a little bit of wood down there now, guys. Back it up. See what it's like penetrating wood. Probably bounce all over the place, but uh, we should be all right. Safety off. Take aim. Came back behind us somewhere. How many rounds have we got left in this thing? Let's have a look. Um, right, and so I've emptied uh, one mag out, so we'll turn it over and put the other one in, and then we'll uh, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and empty this magazine out, and then we'll get back to the uh, studio again. Uh, lower left this time, guys. Three rounds. And there's the uh, pellet hole in the piece of wood. Okay, so in theory, you should have five rounds left. Let's um, pop them in between the two uh, squares on the left. Safety off and. It's 
quite a little group there, nice little group. And then move up to the last five rounds, and that is a very tight little group with one flyer there. Not bad at all. Okay, guys, so there we have it. First rounds with the uh, MP9 there. It's quite noisy. Um, the sights a little bit on the small side. Um, maybe it's my just my old eyes, but the, the rear sight is definitely uh, fuzzy. Not up to much at all, really. I don't think. So that's going to be a future project. I think I'm going to fit some. Um, better open sights to this little fellow. Uh, I might even try an optic on here too. Alright, uh, let's get it back to the safeties on. Um, just uh, pop out the magazine, make it extra safe. And we'll get this stock folded away. And we'll get it back to the studio guys. Okay guys, so there we are, that's my first look at the uh, Gamo MP9, this very nice B&T Brugger and Tomit uh, replica. It weighs quite a bit, I think it weighs just over two pounds. Uh, it's very well made and you will be seeing it again on the channel at some point or another because I will uh, be wanting to have another go with this. We'll have a much better look at it and a better go. Um, yes, quite impressive then. Um, I'll probably be taking it back down in the garage in a few minutes and having a look at it. So, what do you think guys? Have any of you out there got one of these little fellows? Quite impressed with it so far, and as I say, I've not really, this, this, these are the first shots I've had with it. So it's not a lot really. Um, there will be some uh, future videos uh, with it. Because uh, as I say, I'm going to try an optic on here. Uh, probably some better open sights. Maybe some... Uh, Embus. I've got somewhere about the place. I've got some Magpul Embus backup sites about somewhere. I'll try them on there. That'll be my next review, I reckon. Um, a sling, maybe. We can try a sling in here, making it easier to carry about with you. Um, yeah. All right, then, guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick review, this first look at my new B&T MP9, the Gamo MP9. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to subscribe. You can also click like and you can share it with your friends. All three things will help the channel out. Thank you very much. Um, you can also follow me on my Instagram page. And there's also my, um, he said, trying to remember what it is. You've completely forgotten what it is. Patreon page. There we go. It's at the bottom of the, the page, at the bottom of the screen. Why didn't I read it down there? Never mind. Okay, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this first look. My first air gun in about 30 years. Nice, like it. I'm gonna um, see if I can go, because he did have a very nice, while I was there on Saturday, he did actually have a, a very nice uh, Sig Sauer pistol of one description or another. I can't remember if it was a 2022 or what it was, but it was something very nice indeed. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pick one of those up too at some time in the future. Right then guys, uh, Thanks for watching once again, and I will see you back here again very shortly then. Thanks for popping over. Laters! Ruff!